Hello there and welcome to Friendship Alliance Church. My name is Jason, I'm the pastor here. I wanna thank you so much for uh, joining us on the YouTube channel here and uh, holy cow, is it cold here today. I'm very thankful for the heat here. Uh, but yeah, I woke up this morning, it was like negative 20 with the wind chill. It is so cold and, uh, but anyway, I hope it's warm where you are watching this today. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get right into our time together and we're gonna continue this series that we started last week called Radical Simplicity. Radical Simplicity, we are looking at simple topics, simple areas, and looking at how Jesus approached these areas in a radical way. And today is gonna kind of flow similar to last week. We're gonna look at several different uh, uh, several of the different Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, I don't think we're turning into John today. Sorry, John. But uh, anyway, uh, we're we are going to start off in Luke chapter 5. That's where we're going to spend our time today. Uh, last week, we looked at the, the simple topic of compassion. And so we looked at Jesus' radical approach to compassion, uh, who he extended compassion to. So if you missed last week, uh, please check it out on the YouTube channel there. You can find it pretty easily there. Uh, but today what we're going to do is we are going to look at boundaries. That is our word for the day, boundaries. And we're going to look, uh, we're going to see how Jesus had boundaries and how he maintained boundaries around him and how he did so in a radical way. So, but before we dive into that subject, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for this time, and uh, we ask that you would use this to strengthen our faith, that you would build us up with your word today, Father, and we thank you once again for, for bringing us together, uh, different screens, different homes, different communities, however you, however you can bring us together, Father, we, we so appreciate you doing so. And uh, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory for it. In your name, amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and look right into it. Uh, we're going to look at boundaries today. And starting in Luke chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. Let's see what it has to say here. Uh, but yet, news about Jesus spread all the more. So the, the crowds of people came to hear, hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So we see here very clearly that Jesus had an established boundaries. There were always going to be people who needed to hear his message, and there still are today. There was always going to be a sick person that needed to be healed. There was always going to be somebody or somebody's wanting time with Jesus, wanting to connect with him, wanting to get close to him. But Jesus had and maintained boundaries. And, and here's what's interesting about that is that if you look at Jesus's ministry, there were less ways of getting in contact with him than there would be today, right? Just think about it. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine if Jesus's ministry took place during our day and age? Like how many text messages would Jesus get in a given day? How, how many emails do you think it would be in Jesus' inbox? How many messages on, on Facebook and Instagram? How many calls and voicemails do you think that Jesus would get on a given day? Like, do, do you think that he would have to have some boundaries in place if his ministry took place today? Absolutely he would, right? Jesus didn't have this sort of, he didn't allow himself to have 24 seven accessibility. He often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He didn't have 24 seven accessibility, but so often that's what we have allowed in our lives. And we know it's not healthy, but we do it anyway. And so many of us, because we all struggle to establish boundaries. We, we, we always have our phones nearby. Anybody can get a, get a hold of us at any given time, right? Jesus didn't allow himself to have that 24-7 accessibility. He often withdrew to lonely places, right? And, and not establishing boundaries or, or constantly allowing our boundaries to be broken can really have an impact on our life. It truly can in many different ways. Take, for, uh, take this for an example. You've, 
you've established a boundary that uh, that you won't work overtime right now because you're you're just flat out tired or it's having an effect on on your family. And then when you allow that boundary to be broken repeatedly, it makes you even more weary and you're not able to perform at your best. And then and now your family is starting to feel neglected because you've constantly allowed that boundary to be broken. When boundaries are are broken in a in a marriage, it can lead to hurt, it can lead to frustration, it can lead to resentment in a lot of different ways. So some other ways that uh, that some other ways that may occur when we fail to establish boundaries or allow them to re- be broken repeatedly. Here's some other ones for you. You might feel overwhelmed, stressed out, uh, burned out in general. You experience increasing resentment towards others when they reach out or ask for help. You find yourself avoiding other people or avoiding responsibility. You feel that you don't have enough time for yourself to practice self-care, which is important. And we're going to get into that, into that a little later. But Jesus saw the value of having and maintaining boundaries. And if he saw the value in it, I believe you and I should as well. Amen? So, so let's look at actually setting boundaries in our life. There's a couple of things that we need to do. And first of all, what we need to do is we need to set boundaries around things that are important to us or things that we value. Like ask yourself, what what is the goal or need in setting a boundary in this particular area? We, We see here in Luke, Jesus withdrew to lonely places to what? To pray. He knew that prayer was vital. He valued prayer. He valued that connection to God the Father. So he made sure that he placed a boundary around something that was important to him. So, so for you and I, it could be if, if it's spending time with God in, in the word or in prayer, we, we need to set boundaries around that, right? Like, good way to do it is maybe getting your phone out of reach, right? So you're not checking Instagram feeds or whatever, right? Jesus didn't have to worry about having, having an iPhone, at least I'm pretty sure, <laughs> sure he did it. But he, what we see here is this an example is that he created space, he created distance, he created a boundary for himself to spend time with God the Father because he valued that. Another example, if, it, if it's your kids, set boundaries around your chaotic day. That give, you, give yourself a chance to look them in the eye and engage with them when they're talking with you. The, the last uh, couple years in particular has really taught me how important that is. Now with my, my oldest now being 20, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. My oldest is, is 20 and now I see my younger kids and I know that there's a day fast approaching when, when they're going to stop saying, hey dad, look at this, hey dad, check this out, look at this Lego thing, look at this Minecraft thing. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, but I know in the back of my mind that there is a day when they're going to stop saying those questions. So I value that time with my children. So I want to make sure I set a boundary around it, that I set aside some of the things that I'm doing. I take time to engage with them. I take time to look at them and see what's important in their life and in their eyes. Uh, another example, if it's, your, if, it's your, if it's your spouse, set boundaries around time with your spouse. Be intentional about spending time together while also at the same time, respecting each other's time, respecting our, their own, your own boundary with, uh, with yourself and personal space. So it, it, we want to make sure that you're intentional about that time with your spouse and also intentional about giving each other the space that is needed at times as well. Set boundaries around things that you value, things that are important, with, uh, important to you. Second thing to consider when establishing a boundary is to be specific and set a goal when establishing a boundary. Be specific and set a goal. Going back to Luke chapter five here, it's specific and it's goal oriented. Jesus went to a quiet place to what? To pray. It's specific and it's goal oriented. He's going away so that he can pray. 
So for you and I, a couple of examples of what this might look like. You could say, look, I don't want to look at my emails past five o'clock so I can give my family undivided attention or have time for my spouse or have time for myself. It's specific and it's goal oriented. I, the goal is to ha give undivided attention and I'm not gonna check my email after five. So there's an example. Or maybe you wanna start sleeping better. And so you set a boundary around your sleep. That's the goal. I'm, I'm, and, and you're going to set that specific goal. I'm not going to drink coffee after 2 o'clock or whatever, whatever your cutoff time is so that I can sleep better. It's specific and it's goal-oriented boundary. So there's number two for you. And third, and this one's important and so, something to remember here, and that is, you don't have to explain or especially over explain your boundaries. Your boundaries are yours and you don't have to explain them to anyone. If, As we see here in Luke chapter 5 and we're going to look at some other examples here a little later, Jesus doesn't over explain his boundaries, does he? It simply says Jesus withdrew to a lonely place to pray. He didn't go around to the crowd saying, look, I need to step away because of this, that, or, or the other. I need to step away. Is that, is that okay? Are you sure? Like, please don't be mad. Are, are you mad? You, you don't hear Jesus saying that, do you? You don't hear him over explaining his boundaries. And if you have people pleaser tendencies like me, that's what happens when you try to set a boundary. You, you over explain it or you seek validation for it. Is that okay? Are you sure you're going to be mad? Are you sure you're not going to be mad, right? You're worried that you're going to disappoint someone or, or that someone is going to get mad at you. There are, there are so many things written about boundaries. And, and if you ever really dive down this rabbit hole, of looking at boundaries and all of its ways, shapes, and forms in different areas of our life, there there is one uh, there's one phrase that I see time and time again when look when exploring the subject of boundaries, and, and that is this: is that no is a complete sentence, and it's so true. When it comes to your boundaries, no can be a complete sentence, and honestly, it is a word that I have challenged myself to use more this year of just saying no and not having to over explain it. We, we don't have to over explain our reasoning for having a boundary. And we especially don't need to, to the need for other, uh, to seek others approval for it, right? Once again, you don't see Jesus running around seeking approval as he sets boundaries with the crowds. Are you sure? Are you, are you gonna be mad? Is that okay, right? So as, as, G, as demand for, for Jesus' time and those interactions, as they begin to increase drastically, as Jesus' popularity begins to skyrocket among the people and the crowds begin to grow and grow, he, he is forced to go into deserted areas for quiet. And a major reason for that, by the way, is because of the leper that we talked about last week. For those of you who watched last week, Jesus... Uh, uh, Jesus healed the, the leper. But then after, after that, he specifically tells him, like, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody what, that, that I healed you. So what does the, the healed leper do? He, he blabbers to everyone, Jesus healed me. Jesus healed me. Go, go see him. He's right over there. Go tell, you know, go, go over there. Go over there. He's telling everyone that Jesus healed him. And then scripture would later say, as a result of the leper not listening to Jesus, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. So there's just a fun little factoid there for you, for those of you who turned, tuned in last week. But uh, let's, let's look at another set of verses now. And let's go to the Gospel of Mark, specifically Mark chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 35 through 40. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 40. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind, meaning let's go to where the crowd isn't. Let's go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. Uh, they took Jesus along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. 
Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. He Look, he was trying to get away from the crowds because obviously he needed some rest. He needed to sleep. Uh, going on, going on, it says, uh, uh, the disciples woke him and said, teacher, aren't you going to take care? Uh, don't you care that we're about to drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, said to the waves, quiet, be still. The wind died down and it w went completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? You still have no faith. So Jesus, he, he sees the crowd of people. Remember, he has compassion on the crowds as we looked at last week. And he knows that amongst, these, uh, amongst this crowd, there are people with needs. There are people that need to be healed. He knows that there are some with just great struggles and hardships in their life. And there are people that desperately need to hear his, his message. But even with all that being said, he still tells his disciples to get in the boat. And what does he do once he gets in the boat? He falls asleep. He was obviously tired. Are, are the needs uh, of the people here, are they, are they urgent? Yes, absolutely they are. Are their requests and cries for healing sincere? Absolutely they are. But Jesus knows that he needs some boundaries so that he can stop and rest. He needed some distance between he and the crowds. He understood that even he needed boundaries in his life. And once again, if Jesus knew that, if Jesus knew that he needed boundaries, don't you think that we, we need to observe some boundaries in our life as well? If he saw the value of boundaries in the midst of a chaotic crowd with so many pressing needs, with the importance of his message, do you think that maybe we need some established boundaries in our life as well? Now, before we, I'll go ahead and encourage you to turn to Matthew 14. That's where we're going to, that's where we're going to wrap up our time together is in Matthew chapter 14. And I'll give you a, a moment to turn there. Uh, but before we do that, let, let me say this, that there are, there are going to be times when your boundaries, when you start establishing boundaries, there are going to be times where that is going to upset or frustrate someone. And the reason being is because People don't like to hear no, right? When you start establishing boundaries, when you start using no as a complete sentence, it's probably going to upset someone. It's probably going to disappoint someone, frustrate someone, et cetera. And this is just my thought, so, so just kind of take it for what it's worth. But I got to thinking about all the crowds. I just, I just visualize all the crowds, the, the people just flooding Jesus, trying to get, get Jesus' attention, trying to get that one-on-one -on -one time with him. And then when he would withdraw, he, and he often withdrew to lonely places, it said. When I, when I think about that, I'm sure that there was someone in, the, in, in that crowd that was disappointed. When you think about it, I have a hard time thinking that, that everyone in the crowd that didn't get time with Jesus said, oh man, well, Better luck next time. Oh, well, I bet you there were some disappointed people. Oh, I, I wanted so desperately. I needed to talk to Jesus. I needed that healing. I needed this, that, or the other. And I, and I bet you there was someone disappointed as he withdrew to lonely places. So for you and I, when, when we set boundaries or begin to establish boundaries in our life, it's probably going to disappoint someone. It's probably going to frustrate someone. And this is probably really hard to hear, especially if you have spent your life looking for external validation or approval. And something that, something that I've been challenging myself with recently is simply reminding myself of this, is that I am not in charge of other people's reactions or emotions. Like their reaction to my boundary is their reaction and I'm not responsible for it. I, uh, I read this quote in, in preparation for this message and it says this, that those who get angry when you set a boundary are the ones that you need to set boundaries for. And that's, that's so true, isn't it? 
That's so true. You're, so just just know, there's my two cents there about handling handling other people's disappointment when you establish boundaries. It's it's bound to happen, but you are not responsible for their reaction, for their emotions to your established boundary. So anyway, let's let's get back here. Let's get back. Uh, Matthew 14 is where I said where we're gonna go. And but before we read uh, before we read the text here, let me let me say this is that because life is guaranteed to be difficult, which which it is. Even the Bible tells us in this life we will face trouble. Because life is guaranteed to be difficult, boundaries are all the more important for, for our, our own self-care. It's, it's so true. So to bring bring us up to speed here, before we look in Matthew 14 here, uh, Jesus had just has just found out that one of his closest friends and John the Baptist was beheaded. And obviously, upon hearing this, I mean, he's, he's heartbroken. He's, he's grieving immensely over the loss of his friend in such a horrific, tragic way. So with that in mind, let's, let's pick up here. Matthew 14, starting in verse 13. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Look, he was trying to get away. He needed some space. He needed some boundaries so he can he can grieve, he can mourn. And goes on to say, hearing this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. They're following Jesus as he's trying to, to get away, to, to mourn, to grieve. And when Jesus landed, he saw the large crowd that had followed him. And then it says this, he had compassion on them because he is full of compassion as we looked at last week and he goes on to say that he healed their sick as evening approached the disciples came to him and said that this is a remote place and it's getting late send them send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy themselves some food and Jesus replied they don't need to go away uh, you give them something to eat and then we see Jesus do the miracle here he feeds 5000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. And let's let's skip ahead in the text here. Let's uh, picking up again in verse 22. Immediately after after he had fed them, immediately he uh, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to him the other side while he dismissed the crowd. He needed that time. He needed to dismiss the crowd so that he can now go and be by himself. And it goes on to say in verse 23, after he dismissed them, he went on a mountainside by himself to pray. So, once again, we see Jesus leave the crowd. He, he leaves the crowd after he fed them. Even though they were fed, I guarantee that there were people with needs that wanted some, some one-on-one time with Jesus, with the 5,000 people. But Jesus needed time to pray, didn't he? He needed time to reconnect with God the Father. He needed time to rest. He needed time to grieve and to mourn. Like he still hasn't had time to mourn yet, has he? Remember, the crowds followed him and he, while he was trying to step away and grieve. Like, imagine if that were you. Imagine if that were you for a second. Like someone really close to you has died in this horrible, tragic way and, and people won't leave you alone to mourn. I, I bet you would be pretty angry, right? I, I, I would be angry. But we see Jesus, he's moved by compassion. He fed them in a way that only he could. And then afterwards, he immediately went away from the crowd to pray and to allow himself to grieve. Jesus had boundaries here to connect with the Father. And also he had some boundaries in place for some self-care. Remember, he was in the boat sleeping when, when he was getting away from the crowd earlier. Now he's getting away to, to once again pray and to grieve and to mourn over the loss of his friend. Setting boundaries is one of the best ways to care for yourself. And the thing is, there, there, there will always be another email to answer. There will always be some more, some more laundry and some dishes to be done, especially at my house. There will always be that next email thing or that next someone wanting your attention, because life is guaranteed to be difficult, boundaries, once again, are all the more important. And breaking from the grind, the hustle, 
means giving yourself time and energy to take care of yourself. Now, is this concept of establishing boundaries and maintaining boundaries, is is it easy to apply at times? No, it's not. Because life isn't easy and it's busy. There's always something that needs to be done, right? And once again, this concept is especially difficult if you have people pleaser tendencies. Uh, A quote that I, another quote that I read in preparation for this says this, empathy without boundaries is self-destruction. Think about that for a second. Empathy without boundaries is self-destruction. And coming from a a person who is trying to break the chains of people-pleasing, this is so incredibly true. Hear me on that. It is so true. Just constantly saying, oh, I just want... I just want people to know I care. I just, I just want them. I just want to show them that I care. I, just, I don't want to disappoint them. I don't want them to be to be mad at me or upset with me. Without boundaries, it's going to break you. It's it is. It's going to break you. You're gonna get burned out. You're gonna get stressed out. Anxiety is gonna take over. Empathy without boundaries leads to self destruction. So pl- be mindful of that when establishing when maintaining boundaries, they are so needed for your own personal self-care, amen? And when you kind of look at what we've explored today, I consider, I consider Jesus' approach to boundaries radical. I really do. Why? Just, Just think about the needs. The needs of the people were so Great. I mean, just the crowds of people coming to Jesus. The needs were so great. His mission uh, of proclaiming the gospel, the, the proclaiming the good news of, of heaven, like, uh, utmost importance for humanity. He carries the most important message with him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's carrying that message, that mission with him. His time on earth, he knows that it's limited. He, and he tells his disciples that constantly, doesn't he? That his time is limited. And yet, he still maintained and established boundaries in his life. He had boundaries to take care of him, to take care of himself physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And once again, if Jesus saw the value in boundaries uh, of boundaries in his life, then so should we. Amen. Amen. Would you join me as we close together in prayer? Father, we thank you once again for this time, and we thank you for your radical approach to boundaries. How you show us how how truly valuable they are in our lives and how important they are to us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We thank you for your blueprint in this area, and I pray that we would apply it in our lives as well. Our lives were never meant to be accessed 24 7 we we have we we need some boundaries in our life for for care for to to connect with you we need boundaries and i pray lord that we would establish those and that we would establish them firmly and that it's okay to disappoint people it's okay to tell people no and i pray lord that each of us would once again look at your example and apply it to every area of our life We thank you once again for this time. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I want to thank you so much for uh, for tuning in uh, today to the YouTube channel. If you think that someone else could be blessed or could use uh, a message like this today, uh, we encourage you to share it with them. Uh, Every like, share. Uh, every subscribe on the YouTube channel here helps us to helps the, the message go forward. It's not our message that that we value, but it's the message of Jesus Christ and the hope that that people receive in it that's important. So every every like, share, subscribe helps the good news of Jesus Christ go forward. So we encourage you to do so. Uh, we also encourage you not just to uh, consume uh, Church Online, but to uh, to have it be a shared experience. Uh, share this with other people. Uh, watch this with someone else. Ask each other questions. Uh, where we are called to spur one another along towards love and good deeds. So I encourage you to do so as well. 
Lots of ways that you can stay connected and engage with us. You can find some uh, links to uh, ways that you can do that in the video description. Also, all the songs that we do at our in-person service, you can also find in the video description as well. Uh, so that's what I have for you this week, church. Uh, have a blessed, have an awesome week. Uh, go forth and establish those boundaries. Amen. Love you, church. God bless you.